The intent of this video is to review the 50 caliber armor-piercing ammunition ballistics as adopted by World War II bomber gunners and fighters. Virtually all World War II U.S. bombers and fighters adopted the 50 caliber cartridge as a standard armament. The gun of choice to shoot this cartridge was the Browning AN-M2 machine gun. This chart represents the U.S. Army Air Force's specifications and parameters of the M2 machine gun based on a March 1944 armaments document. Notice that the muzzle velocity is defined as 2800 feet per second, which equates to Mach 2.51. The rate of fire varied from 700 to 850 rounds per minute. The rate of fire can be varied by adjustment of the oil buffer. 850 rounds per minute equates to 14 rounds per second. This chart lists additional Browning M2 characteristics from a World War II training manual. The barrel length is defined as 36 inches. This dimension will be used later. An exploded view of the gun's components is shown in this chart. The machine guns were belt fed. There were four general types of 50 caliber cartridges adopted by World War II bomber gunners and fighters as defined in this 1944 aircrew gunnery manual. The cartridges were mixed in ammo belts depending on the threat and were modified based on combat experience and lessons learned. The tips of the cartridge bullets were painted to indicate the type of bullet. The first row describes parameters of the armor piercing 50 caliber cartridge. This image lists parameters and characteristics of the 50 caliber armor piercing bullet from a World War II ammunition booklet. This image identifies the cutaway components of the armor piercing cartridge from the same source. The bullet's tungsten chromium steel core is shaded in this section. The bullet's steel core provides excellent penetrating power. The bullet's gilding jacket is shaded in this section. The jacket is fabricated from an alloy of 90% copper and 10% zinc, as defined in this image from the same source. Early war U.S. bomber ammo belts consisted of a repeating mix of four armor piercing and a single tracer, as shown in this view. The ammo belts would be delivered in 98-pound ammo crates, or the ammo belts could be constructed by the base's armorer by connecting loose rounds with links as requested. The ammo crates identify the ammo belt mix. This ammo box lists four armor piercing and a single tracer as a repeating ammo belt mix. Vintage World War II photographs show ammo crates with ammo mixes of four armor piercing and a single tracer in this image, this image, and this image. The size differences of the 50 caliber, 30 caliber, and 45 ACP is shown in this graphic from a 1944 aircrew gunnery manual. The 50 caliber bullet has around seven times the muzzle kinetic energy of the 30 caliber bullet. The 50 caliber armor piercing bullet is intended to induce damage by deep penetration of engine blocks, pass through bulky structure like wing to body joints, and defeat aircraft armor. The cartridge will shoot through thin skin structure without imparting much damage. This chart outlines the bullet drop of the 50 caliber armor piercing round at zero altitude based on a January 1945 fighter gun harmonization manual. The x-axis is the range in feet. The y-axis is a bullet drop in inches. The family of curves represent the true airspeed of the aircraft from 0 to 450 miles per hour. The effective range of a B-17 bomber gunner was 600 yards. A 50 caliber armor piercing bullet fired from a static position at a range of 600 yards would expect to drop 104 inches. The time of flight of a 50 caliber armor piercing round is listed in this table from the same source. The first column is the aircraft altitude. The second column is the plane's true airspeed. The table in the body is the bullet's time of flight in seconds based on the distance traveled. Using parameters from the earlier example, it will take 0.77 seconds for a armor piercing 50 caliber bullet to travel 600 yards if shot from an M2 machine gun at zero altitude and zero forward speed. 
The effective firing range of World War II fighters was 400 yards based on this January 1945 Fighter Gunnery Training Manual. This chart represents the P-51 Mustang's gun converging distances at around 1,100 feet or 366 yards. This image represents the armor-piercing 50 caliber bullet drop for an aircraft at an altitude of 30,000 feet. This chart is valid only for fighters or the forward firing guns on bombers. A P-51 Mustang traveling at 400 miles per hour true airspeed at 30,000 foot altitude will have its bullets drop 23 inches striking a target at a range of 1,100 feet. The bullet's time of flight would equate to 0.365 seconds. The 50 caliber armor piercing penetration thicknesses and angles are defined in this chart from a 1945 terminal ballistics data report. The chart is valid for rolled homogeneous armored steel plate. The x-axis is a penetration thickness in inches and range in yards. The y-axis is a bullet striking velocity in feet per second. The family of curves in the middle of the chart are the bullet striking angle and the muzzle velocity based on barrel length. A bullet striking angle of obliquity is defined as zero for a bullet strike perpendicular to the direction of the plate. For example, let's determine the thickness of an armored plate a B-17 gunner can penetrate firing a 50 caliber armor piercing round at a range of 600 yards and striking the plate at zero degrees. As shown earlier, the B-17 M2 machine guns have a muzzle length of 36 inches. Start by drawing a vertical line at the x-axis 600 yard range intersecting the 36 inch barrel length curve. Draw a horizontal line intersecting the zero degree obliquity angle line. Draw a vertical line to read off the armor panel's gauge at 0.69 inches. The bullet striking velocity also equates to 2125 feet per second. This assumes the relative speed differences between the enemy aircraft and bomber are the same, otherwise the user will need to add or subtract the relative closing speed to the bullet's strike velocity. The thickness of enemy fighter armor depends on many factors. This chart shows the location and gauge of the Imperial Japanese Army's rocket-powered Baka jet-powered suicide bomb based on this June 1945 Japanese Aircraft Performance and Characteristics Manual. The armor consisted of 5 16 armor plates protecting the crew member. The 50 caliber armor piercing round could penetrate this armor at deflections up to 47 degrees obliquity angle at a 400 yard effective fighter range. This chart outlines the pilot protection armor thickness of the Japanese Frank fighter as defined in this August 1945 Air Intelligence Report on Operational Japanese Fighters. The pilot is protected by a half inch thick steel armor plate. A 50 caliber armor piercing round can penetrate a half inch thick armor plate at distances up to 400 yards for strike angles up to 30 degrees. Note that the bullet is likely to slow down some prior to striking the armor plate due to the projectile traveling through aircraft structures and systems. It is also assumed that Japanese armor allowables are equivalent to the tested U.S. homogeneous armor material allowables. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.